Well, good morning again. Good morning, good morning. What, what did we used to sing? We're all in our places with sunshiny faces. <laughs> all of these wonderful songs that come back to me as we move forward in our lives. I think that truly there is something special about what we have memorized before we even started school. Because no matter where our mind goes as we get older, I believe that we will always have those wonderful songs and words and scripture or whatever it is that was important to us at the time of our development embedded in our hearts and our minds and souls. So I wait, welcome every one of you who are here today. It's wonderful to see your faces. I do miss being together in person, but I'll tell you, this sure beats not seeing you and keeping up with you. Hi, Lucy. Howdy. Great to have you join. And it's just so exciting to see how we're going to miss Della and Catherine today. They're both um, out of service, so to speak, literally, and uh, wherever they are in service, we, we bless them and what they're doing today. But with that in mind, I just want to remind us, like we used to always say, we are here by divine appointment and there are no accidents. And I know that each of you are here as not only students of unity, but also of teacher, as teachers of the word, because your lives teach each of us something that's so important. So we're so thankful for, as Marty used to say, we are all ministers. And that was kind of hard for me to grasp that for a long time because I elevated people who, like Ruben, has so many wonderful initials behind his name and so much experience. But, you know, it's like a piece to the puzzle. We all play our part. And if there were only ministers in the pulpit and nobody in the congregation, how would that be? Or if there were uh, teachers and no students. So, and if there were, if we didn't have all of you as friends, you know, it would, our life would be much different. So that is just wonderful. Oh, take a deep breath and just enjoy today. I went out this morning and sat in my swing to get a little sunshine and to um, have my breakfast. And I had a big treat. I saw a huge line of geese fly overhead. And first I heard them and I thought, where are you? Where are you? I want to see you. And I sat there and I waited and waited in person. They came in their V formation and how they know how to do what they have to do is amazing too, isn't it? Well, today's daily word, interestingly enough, is healing. And um, we're all on our own healing pathway. And as I mentioned earlier, my brother, who uh, will be would have been 92 next month in October, he is totally healed. He has been released from the bonds that held him to this earth. And I give thanks that he had a life that was well served and served his family of six children and so many grandchildren, great grandchildren. And he taught us so much. So I am pleased that he is no longer suffering from any of the diseases that um, were on him. They were not him, but they were on him. So I give thanks for my brother Robert mentioned his name as we talk about healing. My thoughts, words, and actions affirm wholeness. Wholeness is my true nature. Even if I am facing a health challenge, divine life is active in every cell of my body. Knowing this truth, I hold healing thoughts and speak life-affirming words while making sure to give my body the rest, nourishment, and care that will help it heal, I refuse to allow thoughts of sickness or weakness to grow in my consciousness. I seek support among friends and family who share my belief in wholeness. As I have been supported, I offer my support. I feel honored when I'm asked for healing prayer. I look beyond the appearance of illness and with faith-filled vision, I behold and affirm the wholeness that is seeking to express more completely in the lives of those for whom I pray. My thoughts, words, and actions affirm wholeness. 
That is so important because our words are so important. What we claim, what we, what we say, what we affirm is what really nourishes our soul. And this is interesting from John, the fifth chapter and the sixth verse, we read, when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been there a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? And I thought that was a real interesting thing because many of us want to be well, but we may not want to do the work that's required to get us there. And just as when Jesus did so many healings, the people had to participate too, didn't they? It wasn't just like magic wand. They needed to either go and wash their eyes or they had to take up their bed and walk. And they had to have some form of faith with that. So we just affirm that healing is available to all of us. And we're all here to learn the pathway. And I am sure beyond a shadow of a doubt that Reuben will be the one to share this with us today as he talks about water. Now, let's see, we can do our affirmations, which also affirm our health for our bodies. And that is, I'll say it first, and then you can join me. There is only one power, one presence, and one love active in my life. God, the good, omnipotent. Can you all join me with that? There is only one presence, one power, one love active in my life. God, the good, omnipotent. And as we pray for others in our circle and beyond, we say there is only one power, one presence, one love active in your life, God, the good, omnipotent. And as you think of someone on your prayer list, let's affirm that for them. There is only one power, one presence, one love active in your life, God, the good, omnipotent. And to our beautiful congregation that meets here on Sunday, we affirm in this ministry that there is only one power, one presence, one love active in this ministry. God, the good, omnipotent. And together, there is only one power, one presence, one love active in this ministry. God, the good omnipotent. And as we raise our consciousness to include everyone in the world, in this universe, in this country, in every part that might be divided and yet united, we know that there is only one power, one presence, one love active in the world today. God, the good, omnipotent. And there's power in saying this together, so let's repeat it together. There is only one power, one presence, one love active in the world today. God, the good, omnipotent. I just love being here and love sharing these wonderful words and really emphasizing the connection we all have with each other. So I tried to find some songs regarding or relating to healing. And in our book, if you have the hymnal, if you can turn with me to page 137, we will sing a song. Now this is gonna be acapella. And why is it acapella? Because I didn't find it on Sharon's list of songs. So I'm going to um, sing it and you're welcome to sing it with me. And it's kind of interesting that the name of this song is he healeth me, O oh blessed thought. And it brought back a song that I used to sing as a child, and it was, He leadeth me. So we have new words, and this was uh, adapted from another song by Joseph Gilmore. So if you have your songbooks handy or not, I'll just sing it a cappella, and we'll, that way I won't have to just read the words to you. He healeth me. 
Oh, blessed thought, oh, words with heavenly comfort fraught. Whate'er I do, where'er I be, still tis God's love that healeth me. He healeth me, he healeth me, by his own power he healeth me. His omnipresence could I see, for by his power he healeth me. Lord, I would feel thy life in mine to thrill my soul with love divine, to bind me closer still to thee, since tis thy love that healeth me. He healeth me, he healeth me, by his own power he healeth me. His omnipresent good I see, for by his power he healeth me. Aren't those beautiful words? I know they'd probably be even prettier if I didn't sing them, but I just had to sing them since I knew the tune. And that was really great. So, well, next week we are looking forward to having Jackie with us. And she's here with us today since she's home healing her body. And uh, so she's not at Spiritual Life Center where she normally would be, but she's with us today and will be with us next week. And being the director that she is, she will be soloing. Now, that doesn't mean she'll necessarily be singing us a song. It could mean that. But what it does mean is that she will be the speaker and the platform assistant. So double duty. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. And I don't have any other announcements. Um, so let's move into the next song. And again, this is going to be on page 135. It's just two pages back if you didn't close the book. And interestingly enough, this is another song I knew with different words when I was growing up. It was, um, let's see, we called it saved by his power divine. I don't know if any of you knew that song, but in unity, we say healed by the power divine on page 135. And since my voice cracks so much, I think I will do a service to the song by reading it. But it was written by Charles Fillmore, at least the words were. It went healed by the power divine, one, one with the love sublime, my life is now is sweet and my joy is complete for I'm healed, healed, healed. And I'll say it one more time. Healed by the power divine, one, one with the love sublime. My life now is sweet and my joy is complete for I'm healed, healed, healed. And I just think that's just wonderful to get into our message today with Reuben being with us and talking more about uh, soon. But I want to just spend a little time in meditation because I don't know how all of you are, but sometimes when I want to pray for someone who's ill, I don't always know how to pray. I sometimes pray, of course, for healing, but how that healing is going to be manifested in their bodies, I don't always know but spirit does. And sometimes someone's total healing is when they leave their body and we can rejoice and be thankful for that as well. But one prayer that Jesus taught us that I thought would be good to say during this time of meditation is our father. So I want to say that and I hope that you will join with me. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed, be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And leave us not in temptation, but deliver us 
from evil. For thine is the power and the kingdom forever. Amen. Just take a deep breath and know that we have all we need. Give us this day our daily bread. Teach us, teach us to love one another. And teach us to have our priorities straight and put you first. And for all of your blessings, I give thanks. Amen. Well, it's a little bit early, but I know Reuben has so much to tell us. And you can take as much time as you want, Reuben, to come in and give us more healing information as you share mm -hmm. just some of what you have to share. Because I know you're your capacity to present a whole semester's worth of classes is there. <laughs> but we just are so thankful that you've agreed to be with us on the fourth Sunday through this year. So tell us your next chapter. Thank you, Esther. Thank you so much. I am honored and totally grateful to be here to share with you. Um, today is a powerful, powerful topic. And it's a topic that I have a tremendous relationship with, and that is water. To be like water, be like water. And it's interesting, when I look back at my life, I was cast into the water by my father when I was four years old. He threw me into the pool and said, swim. And so I did. <laughs> and it's been absolutely an amazing life of being in the water. It really has. And at the age of 15, I learned how to become a lifeguard. And to become a lifeguard is rigorous training. It really is. More than half of the class is spent doing one thing. And that is learning how to take care of yourself. To be able to escape when somebody has their clutches on you, you need to be able to escape so that you actually don't create a double drowning. The first rule of every lifeguard is no double drownings. And you know this when you get on an airplane because they say it all the time. In the case of an emergency, an oxygen mask will come down. Put it on your face first before helping somebody else. Isn't that amazing? We get that message, but most of us ignore it. We ignore the importance of taking care of ourselves. Jesus said it well, love thy neighbor as thyself, as thyself. Most of us give to others far better and far more energy and love than we give to ourselves. So the first place I go, and a lot of people ask me, where do you go? What, what's the first thing you focus on when it comes to helping healing people? Because I heal people. I've been doing this for, for decades. How do I heal people? The first place I go is water. It's the first place I go. It's so important. One of my favorite spiritual teachers, I have many, I have many. Bruce Lee. Most people don't realize just how spiritual he was. Profoundly spiritual. Yes, he was a TV star in martial arts, and he was an incredible martial artist. But most people don't realize the mind of Bruce Lee. And he was recorded saying these words, empty your mind, be formless, shapeless, like water. 
You put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put water into a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. Remember that running water never grows stale. You've got to keep on flowing. Profound words from Bruce. He understood a lot. Most of us don't realize that we are designed to be water. 70% of our body is comprised of water. Water, not protein, no. Water, water. And it's extraordinary when we start to think about it. it now, we can, uh, we can actually absorb one cup of water in just about 15 minutes. It's so fast. Our body is designed to absorb water faster than anything else that we were to eat, any either drink or eat. Water is absolutely sucked in faster than anything else in our body. We are designed to absorb and embrace and to use water faster than anything else. And most of us intuitively know this. We know if you were stranded out in the desert, the first thing you'd be looking for is water. Our body can, all, can only go a day without water. It's the most important thing we need to absolutely bring into our body is water. We can go three, four days without food, but you can only go one day without water. It's critical that we understand this. This is divine design. And at the fundamental, the fundamental unit of our body for us to heal is the cell. It's the cell. And every cell, except the, the fat cells, the fat cells are only about 10% water, just so you know. Okay, very little water in the fat cells. They're storage units. But all the other cells, about 90% water. It's completely the reverse. Now, we should pay attention to that. Our cells are 90% water. Now, everything that we eat, everything that we think, everything that we do, everything gets into the cell. Everything. That's how we're designed. So it's critical that we use our resources to get enough water into our body because we're constantly losing water. We're constantly losing water. There's a flow to our water. So respiration perspiration, urination, and defecation are the four ways in which we lose water constantly. Constantly. We're always losing water. This is why when you get up in the morning and you put yourself on the scale, you are the lightest you will be during the day. Because you just slept and you released a lot of water weight. Water weighs. I mean, how many of you have picked up a five-gallon jug of water? That's about 48 pounds. It's got weight to it. So we are water, and 70% of our body is made up of water. Some people want to lose weight. Don't stop drinking water, okay? You need to drink water. It's so important. It is so critically important. Really, really important. Water benefits our body in so many ways, so many ways. Most of us don't, don't realize the saliva in your mouth is mostly water. That's what allows you 
to actually digest your food right off, off the bat. And you, there's enzymes in your mouth right away. It's designed. There's amylose and amylopectin that's secreted into your saliva. When you see a beautiful piece of bread or some potatoes, you will secrete amylo, amylase and en enzyme to be able to break down amylose and amylopectin, the two complex carbohydrates that human beings must have in order to create energy in our body. And then in the digestive system, we secrete water. We have water that's needed to actually create the gastric juices. And then that way allows the food to actually break down. And then it enters into this intestinal tract, which is a miraculous creation. Miraculous. When you think of all the enzymes coming in, the bile salts and the bile uh, and the pancreatic enzymes to digest the food and break it down so beautifully so that it can actually pass through the tissue and the mucosa of the intestinal tract to be absorbed into the bloodstream so that it can be transported. Oh, that blood. Oh, that blood is pr primarily water. That's 90% water as well. And you need to have enough fluidity in the blood so that you can actually transport things to every part of the body, to feed every part of the body, every cell in the body. So water is important for all the cells to be able to grow and reproduce and survive. And we need, we need plenty of water. We need a, and sufficient water in, in order to flush out the waste, to transport it out, mainly in the urine. But we also need it to lubricate your joints. Did you know that? You know, when you start feeling stiffness, one of the first indications when you feel stiff is that you may not be having enough water. Mm. Water is the major component of every single part of your body. And by the way, we need it for our brains. 80% of our brain is water. You don't need the coffee. You do not. You've been brainwashed, as, as uh, Reverend Jim used to say. We've been duped, hoodwinked, bamboozled, and deceived into believing we need the caffeine. No, what we need, my friends, is water. That's what we need first thing in the morning. We're designed for that. Your body temperature is regulated by your water, by having enough water. It's really important. That's why we sweat. We sweat to be able to cool our body down when we're perspiring. It's a shock absorber for your spinal cord. Mm. Cerebral spinal fluid is so precious. It has to have the right amount of water for your spinal cord to communicate messages throughout your entire body. We've got to have that. And the way we get, we get oxygen throughout the rest of the body is that it has to be transported through the blood. And there's this wonderful molecule called hemoglobin that's in your blood cells. And that's allowing us to transport oxygen through the water into all the tissues. There's so much to water. It's amazing. Now, here's what we don't realize. What we don't realize is that when we're depleted in water, even a small amount, it can have a remarkable difference in our ability to function. Now, I've coached athletes, high-level athletes. They've got, I've had many that have gone off, off to college on scholarship, gone to the Olympic trials, uh, won nationals. I mean, I've had many, many athletes. Now, here's what we show in the research. A mere 2.5% loss in body weight due to losing water. It's not a whole lot. So if you weigh 100 pounds, that's two and a half pounds of weight. If you weigh 200 pounds, that's five pounds of water weight. If you lose that much water in the course of whatever you're doing, that will lead to a 45% loss in the capacity to perform, to function. That's dramatic. That is absolutely dramatic. It will impact the, the blood volume and it will lead to an increase in blood pressure and cramps and many other things. Now, we need to be drinking water consistently. 
in order to really prevent this proactively. Most people are reactive. They wait until they're thirsty to drink water. That's a, that is a design in our brain. We've been divinely designed to feel thirsty. But if you are feeling thirsty, my friends, you've gone past the point of modest dehydration. So that's an early sign of dehydration is you're feeling thirsty. That's you want to be drinking water proactively before you reach that point. So if you're starting to notice being thirsty, you're actually dehydrated. And you get dry mouth or sticky saliva, all right? You're actually dehydrated. So it's very important to understand this. By the way, I've been uh, being a health professional, I can tell you this. I have many colleagues that are hospitalists. So they take care of the patients once they go through the emergency room and they're admitted into the hospital. And one of the first orders of business for almost every physician admitting somebody with complications of a chronic condition, chronic disease, is to put people on an IV to hydrate them again. They're dehydrated. It happens close to 90% of the time. It's extraordinary what happens. Now, extreme, no, moderate, moderate, moderate dehydration. So what's classified as moderate dehydration is you have extreme thirst. If you're really thirsty, you haven't had water for a long time and you're noticing you're parched. That is moderate, moderate dehydration. Not a good sign. Not a good sign. So in that situation, you'll notice that you're you have a you're dry inside your mouth and your eyes don't tear. You have decreased urination. And you're maybe going once or twice in a day. That's moderate dehydration. And your urine gets to be dark, dark amber or brown. That's a bad sign. That is a bad sign. Now, a lot of times people experience headaches and lightheadedness when they're dehydrated. One of the first things to do is actually drink water. So that's that's a divine signal. If you're experiencing headaches or lightheadedness, that's a signal you are probably dehydrated because your brain is having difficulty functioning. So it's important to pay attention to that. Severe dehydration is actually life-threatening and it may require emergency care. So this is where people faint and they're lightheaded. They have a weak and rapid pulse, cold and clammy skin, skin, or it's hot, dry skin, almost no urination and loss of consciousness. So that's significant. I have seen this. It's not a good thing. And people need to be taken care of very quickly in this situation. Now, I want to share with you some positive research about this, because this is exciting news now that I've thoroughly depressed you. So the good news, here's the good news. So in one of the, one of the most interesting bits of research on lifestyle and longevity is the blue zones. Now, the Blue Zones, in case you haven't watched, watch a documentary. So I'm going to encourage you to watch a wonderful documentary. And it's called Live to 100 Years. It's on Netflix. It's fantastic. Now, our cousins, the Seventh-day Adventists. I call people cousins all the time. Okay, so they're our cousins. They are really rigorous about healthy lifestyle. That is part of their spiritual practices. So they, and they're one of the longest living groups of people on the face of the planet, which is very interesting. And they are the number one longest living group of people here in the United States. They are remarkable. Now, most of that population lives in Loma Linda, but they're all over the place. So it's really remarkable because they follow certain principles and they have a wonderful medical center, Loma Linda University Medical Center. By the way, the food is fantastic. So the thing is, they've done tremendous research 
And they've had this really long-term ongoing research study called the Adventist Health Study. And they've been studying their population for well over 20 years. And they've been looking at all different kinds of factors of how people within their community are actually able to live a long and thriving and healthy and happy life. So one of the most interesting research findings that they have shown, and it was published back in 2002 in the American Journal of Epidemiology. So that's a very well-known and highly reputable scientific journal. And with over 20,000 participants in the study, they showed in a six-year follow-up that a mere five eight ounce glasses of water, 40 ounces of water, that a mere 40 ounces of water a day decreased the risk of stroke and heart attack by a whopping 50%. That should be on CNN and NBC, NBC News and ABC News every single night, as far as I'm concerned. The number one killer in the United States is heart disease and strokes right behind that. Okay, if we could actually reduce the risk of mortality from those two conditions by simply drinking five glasses of water, do you have any idea of the impact of that? That's remarkable. That's remarkable. So I'm telling you now. And by the way, we need to drink more, but that's just a mere 40 ounces. That's not much. That is not much. It's remarkable. It's a whopping 50% decrease. Now, some of you I know, you've struggled with losing weight. You've worked at it. You've tried changing your diet. You've tried going to the gym. But here's a really interesting research study. It was a randomized 12-week clinical study. So we took a group, of, large group of people, split them up into two groups randomly. And then what we did, one group, we just had them do the usual. Okay, they did the usual to try to lose weight. They went to the gym, they tried to change the diet. The other group, here's what we did. We had them drink just two cups of water before each meal. Two cups of water before each meal. That's all they did. Two cups of water. It's not much. Okay, this is a little bit more than a cup. So the thing is, it's two cups of water before each meal. And guess what? The people who drank the water had a 44% greater rate of weight loss. 44%? That would put Nutrisystem, Jenny Craig, Weight Watchers, Metafast, all out of business just by drinking water. So if you're seeing a pattern here is that our body is designed, divinely designed, and it, we restore health, we heal when we are starting to have sufficient amounts of water. We need to have sufficient amount of water. It is critical. It's critical. It is the, it's the most essential ingredient for the chemical reactions that foster healing. I love the message for today. Us are so beautiful. It's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. So my question for you is this. Do you want to be made well? So if the answer is yes, here's your measures. So one of my colleagues, Dr. Brooke Goldner, absolutely phenomenal. She's an incredible doctor who focuses on empowering people with autoimmune disorders. She reversed her lupus. Mm. How often do you hear that one? And she wrote a book called Goodbye Lupus and Goodbye Autoimmune Disease. And it's just absolutely extraordinary. Now, what she, her research shows is this. You should have a minimum, she recommends, I should say, she recommends a minimum of one ounce per pound of body weight per day, one ounce of water 
per pound of body weight for di per day if you weigh less than 96 pounds. So your minimum is 96 ounces if you weigh 96 pounds. Now, up to a gallon of water per day is considered optimal for most people. That's a gallon, 128 ounces, 128 ounces. So somewhere between 96 and 128 ounces would be considered optimal. And it may vary for each of you. Everybody's a little different. Now, if the conditions require that you need a little extra salt in your diet, because you have no salt in your diet, you may need to increase the sodium if you're increasing a lot of water in your diet. Don't do it all at once, by the way. Don't do that. Gradually increase your water intake. Now, if you have kidney or heart issues, then you have to work with your physician as far as regulating the amount of water. Because if you're on medications, or even I, I even work with people on dialysis, so we have to really regulate the amount of water that we intake. So that's really important to, to manage. But this gives you an idea of how much water. The average person drinks 32 ounces of water a day. That's it. Far below, far below what really is healthy. So I try to get people to at least 96 ounces. That's what I try to do. Now, it may be a lot for you right now, and that's okay. But here's a, a way to break it up into tiny little habits. First and most important habit, I do this with every single one of my clients. It's so important, and it's a tiny little habit, and that is to drink two full eight-ounce glasses of water first thing in the morning. First thing in the morning. Get up, you go to the bathroom, you brush your teeth. Okay, two eight ounce glasses of water. That's 16 ounces. That to me is a minimum and it works really well. I drink more than that. But the thing is, two eight ounce glasses of water will make a huge difference. And it's the most important thing you need first thing in the morning because you have been dehydrated from sleeping. So you need to get water. You need to replenish the water in your system. It's the most important time. So we're designed to drink water right off the bat. That will hydrate your brain and it will make a big difference in your functioning. And by the way, I've had people start to shift to drinking water and they found out something very fascinating. They didn't need the coffee anymore. <laughs> so I was addicted to caffeine. I was. And then it reached a certain point because I started drinking I drank soda. That's what I did. Okay. Mountain Dews, maximum caffeine and sugar allowable by law. It's a drug. Absolutely. It's ridiculous. All right. Just absolutely ridiculous. So I was addicted. And the thing was that the caffeine started to affect my system because caffeine is a drug. It's an alkaloid. It, and it's also a pesticide. It is absolutely harmful. Absolutely. And I didn't realize this, but it started happening. I started having rupturing of my blood vessels in my eyes. And I started having floaters in my visual field. It freaked me out. And I knew what was happening. I knew. So I said, okay, stop. I'm, I'm going to do an experiment. So here's what I did. I stopped the caffeine right away, stopped for a whole week. And then I tested it. I said, okay, I'm going to have a little caffeine, see what happens. See if the reaction comes back. See if that was the cause. And sure enough, came right back. Then I said, that's it. I'm done. There's no sense creating macular degeneration and losing my eyesight just because of caffeine. There's no sense. It's not worth it. So I stopped drinking caffeine at that point. I became done. So and I've done a lot more research since. Now, back to the story. So two full eight ounce glasses of water first thing in the morning. That's 16 ounces. Then drink a glass of water before and after each meal. Or if you want to lose weight, drink the two eight ounce glasses of water before each meal. All right. So that's three times 16. Okay. So that gives you more. 
then you need to be physically active every single day just just to remind you all right so drink two glasses of water before being physically active whether you're going on a walk or you're going to the gym it doesn't matter and then drink two glasses of water after physical activity to replenish your water because you'll lose a lot more water through respiration while you're physically active that will get you to 96 ounces it's a wonderful formula it works really well now some people tell me i don't like to drink water how many of you are out there i don't like to drink water i need flavor okay i need flavor i don't like the taste of water i need flavor okay guess what you can you can actually flavor your water and even eat your water okay because you can actually add things to your water like lemon and lime and cucumber and orange and you can do things like that and pineapple even oh it's really good okay you can add things to your water you can infuse that into your water and flavor your water it's really wonderful to be able to do that also there are plenty of foods that have lots of water high amounts of water lettuce is 96 percent water tomato is 94 percent water watermelon hmm, who doesn't love watermelon all right 92 percent water all right so there's uh, strawberries 92 mm, percent water so there's plenty of options as far as being able to get hydration in, into your body get water into your body how you know that you're getting sufficient water there's a couple of indicators one when you go to the bathroom check your pee now i i, I can talk about urine all day okay so the thing is, check your pee check your pee it should be pale yellow to clear that's a sign that's an important sign so make sure you do that most people don't pay attention no pay attention your body has signs. We're divinely designed to have indicators. All right. So pay attention to those indicators as part of your dashboard. Now, the other thing that you should also be paying attention to is how frequently you go to the bathroom to urinate. That's a very important sign. If you're going to the bathroom every hour and a half to two hours, that's a very healthy range. Even every hour. Now, optimal is every hour. Optimal is every hour. Okay, but hour and a half to two hours, that's a good range. You should be going to the bathroom. That's that's an indication that your kidneys are working, you're getting enough fluid, you're flushing out everything, you're, you're hydrating your body in every which way. We, you, you've got to be going to the bathroom every hour and a half to two hours. If you're going to the bathroom once or twice a day, clearly you're not getting enough water, clearly. So it's very important. A lot of people say, oh, I have work to do. I have too much going on. I can't afford to go to be going to the bathroom. No, you can't afford to be sick. Can't afford to be sick. You need to have your water. It's really important. I mean, think about it. If you lived in the time of Jesus in, in Israel back, back 2,000 years ago, over 2,000 years ago, and if you were to travel anywhere, guess what? You would be traveling with water. Or you'd be going from one watering hole to the, to the next well. You would go from one well to the next. You knew where all the wells were. You knew where the water resource was. So you've got to have enough water. It's critical. Now, those are your two signs. So pay attention to those. Those will help you tremendously. I always ask all my patients, all my clients, about how frequently they're going to the bathroom and what's the color on the, on the color chart. So that these things, yeah, I get personal. So <laughs> I ask these questions. But, I mean, look. How many, how many doctors ask those questions and they need to, all right? I mean, how many ask, even ask, how many times do you have bowel movements? I, you, I asked that question, all right? So it's really important. So these are bodily functions. We don't have to be squeamish about it. This is how we're designed. We're designed and these things help us to understand our body. And by the way, you don't need to worry about drinking so much water that you have to go to the bathroom frequently. There's a social benefit to this, by the way, because anytime you are trying, you're dealing with somebody that's got drama in their life, all you have to do is say, I I'm so sorry, I can't listen to you right now. I have to run to the bathroom. Okay, so this is critical to be able to heal 
this is the first area that I start with is water and hydration. Be water, be like water and be water, be water because our, our bodies are designed to have so much water. And it's really important. And I love the song that you shared. He healed us me, oh blessed thought, and, and healed by the power divine. And it's about uh, uh, one with love supreme, and that is loving ourselves. Because we're divinely, we're divinely designed to love ourselves. And that means to be able to drink water liberally and consistently and proactively. We want to be able to do that. And just to remind you of another spiritual teacher, one of my favorite spiritual teachers, the importance of water and how it relates to our life. So one of my favorite, 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 favorite teachers is Dr. Wayne Dyer. And I got to see him many years ago, shortly before he passed away here in Sacramento. It was wonderful. And he said, one of the, one of the best ways to think about the simplicity of living life is to remember a song. And this song you probably already know. It's a very, very beautiful song, a simple song, but you've done it. You've sung it many, many times, but you may not realize the importance of the song and the lyrics of the song. So I'm gonna share it with you right now. I'm gonna share the lyrics of the song so, and give you the explanation of the lyrics so you can understand the importance of water in our lives. So the, the song goes like this, row, row, Row your boat, not somebody else's boat. Don't get into somebody else's boat. Don't let anybody else get into yours. Row your boat and only your boat. Now row gently, peacefully, calmly, serenely. And row gently down the stream, not upstream, not against the current, not back up into the waterfalls or the rapids. No, row gently down the stream in the current of life. Life is like water and we're in a boat and we're rowing in a boat that's, that's surrounded by beautiful water and row down the stream gently with the current of life and remember to row merrily joyfully gleefully happily enjoy the beautiful surroundings and enjoy the scenery enjoy the landscape enjoy the trees enjoy the wildlife enjoy everything that life has to offer us enjoy it merrily 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 and remember, life is but a dream that we create. We've been ordained by God to create a beautiful dream of our lives. And we've been ordained by God with this body to take care of and to drink the water that we're designed to drink. Not the coffee, not the soda, not the alcohol, none of that. No, we're designed to be drinking the water. That's why the rivers are filled with water. So questions, comments, insights, ahas, I'm open to anything from any of you. Thank you. <laughs> any questions from anybody? Anything at all, Esther? Esther, you're the moderator. Oh, uh, well, I just unmuted myself, but I just appreciate the instruction on how to incorporate water and small ways of how to increase it and simple ways of checking to see how we are because I know our bodies do talk to ourselves and that's what we need to listen to. So it's a message well served and well deserved for all of us to remember that we need to come to the water. It's wonderful to be in the water. It's wonderful. I love how Christ even describes himself as, you know, he who comes to me will thirst no more for spiritual growth yes. and certainly in our physical bodies we need to be lubricated and yeah. i pre appreciate you talking so much well speaking about being in the flow it's time to uh take our offering whether it's in person or on zoom but i think for me it's easier to send uh an offering to capital city unity at 1050 sagamore way sacramento 95823 
but there are electronic um, methods available as well. So there's the address on the screen, Capital City Unity in care of 1050 Sagamore Way, Sacramento, California, 95822. Thank you so much, Evan, for that. And our closing song today will be, let there be peace on earth. And that's what we all want too, is to have the love and serenity and the peace that God provides to all of us as we continue to spread the word that we've learned today. And I think uh, we all are better informed about something that's so simple and so free. So enjoy and uh, drink up. <laughs> <laughs> here, as we say cheers cheers right and i've got my little cup right here and i see some of you have water and this is not condemnation on any who don't but it certainly is a directional uh, advice to us on how we can participate do we want to be healed so thank you Ruben, for being with us once again look forward to seeing you again on the fourth sunday of uh, october and now we can unmute and say our prayer of protection together. I don't think we'll have the song. Well, we, we could. We, okay, Emma, go ahead and play a song. We do need to have that peace on earth. So go ahead. I'm sorry about that. Isn't it beautiful how spirit moves Emma to put up a beautiful picture with the river flowing through it? Very good, Emma. That was really nice. And if you notice in that river, there was a little heart, a little <laughs> eye in the shape of a heart. So I think it's all things get pulled together so well. So, and if you'll unmute now, unmute, unmute now. I think I already have pair of protection together. Yeah, you are. The light, the light of, of God, God surrounds, surrounds us. us. The, the love, love of God, of God involves us. us. The, the power, power of God, God protects, protects us. us. And the, the presence, presence of God, God watches, watches over, us. over us. Wherever, Wherever we are, are oh, I it is. is. I am. All, All is, is well. Is well. Yeah. So come back next week, next week and support Jackie as she ministers to us. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you, Ruben. That was thank great. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Esther. Wonderful. Thank you, Ruben. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Esther. Wonderful. Emma. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Have a good week.